American life is about live and let live. No matter what the item is, no matter what the creature is, great and small, we allow things to live and to die naturally, most of all. The liars of American culture like to kill things. When and women from foreign nations are fascinated with death. Sometimes their classrooms allow them to kill things and try to revive them. It is immoral practices and universities like the University of Illinois that does things like this. I've experienced this a bit. Today I've seen life and death three times. It's kind of unusual for me. This morning as I got up around three to get myself started and going for the day with that morning defecation and pee, a little bird or sparrow, which is one of my animals, flew into the window near me. He kind of knocked himself out, conked himself to the ground, but he was still okay. I checked him and he was okay. He moved a bit and I realized he just needed to rest a little bit from his knocking himself out and off he flew. As I walked back from a restaurant stash that I have, I found a little mouse in the road. And at first I wasn't sure whether it was a mole or whether it was a vole or whether it was a mouse. And he was just a fat field mouse. But he sort of looked conked out. He sort of looked pooped out. And I thought, if you stay here, you're going to get run over. This is a busy road. And I checked him out for a little bit and realized I didn't touch him, of course. But I realized that he was not really mobile. So I went and I found some fabrics that I had pulled from my little stash that I was planning to use for something else. And I tried to move him and he started to move. But what I could see was that his body was somewhat broken. So obviously he had lost his life a little bit to a hawk or to an eagle or to a crow. Hard to say. So what I decided to do was kind of pay attention to him a little bit. And I tried to lay down just a little bit of Pop-Tart for him. So that he could maybe die happy if he was going to leave us. But that didn't quite work. And he couldn't quite get up onto the embankment to get himself out of the street. So I scooped him up in a cup as he started to run a little bit from me. I put him down at the foot of a tree. I left him with two pop darts, basically broken pieces off of mine. And I hope that he has a sublime time. What I saw was that little shock of being scooped into that styrofoam cup was okay by him because he was eating just fine when I went back to give him the second piece. Because God said, give him another piece. He's going to be there for a while. And that's what I did. But now I'm coming to my favorite little lake space where there's just a few geese who hang out during the day or under this beautiful tree. And what I'm finding is death. Unusual death of one of the geese. Really unusually laid down. Unless, of course, a goose or a bird lays his head down in honor of the Lord. And maybe that's what this image is. But he's laid there just like that. He's just off the bank. He's not in the water, which is probably good because that would make the water foul. But there has been a few geese death around these waters. I've seen them, and it's sad for us. I don't know if we call DNR to pick up the carcasses. I don't really know about that. But what the Lord has always said is, Thou shall not kill. Now we are above the animals of the air and above the animals of the sea and we are above the domesticated animals and we are most definitely allowed to protect ourselves against wild creatures of the night and day that get out and try to play with our lives and it's not safe for us, our children, or animals in any way. But the reality of life is there is life and death and life and death is not up to me, it's up to God, that is truthful and that is something we can see but usually when a geese is dying, other geese stay around him a little while. Or so that's the story of the native Indian lore. But what I can tell you is that when people are approaching death, most Americans don't want to admit that their mother or father, sister or brother, are in the final stages of life. And my encouragement to anyone is that they should be bathed in the word of Christ, prepared to see the Lord and openly ready to be embraced by their angels that are assigned to them at birth. 